Hi everyone, this is a Speaking Burger and today we're gonna have a chat with Dennis Furia, creator of Deck of Wonders. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel for similar content. Deck of Wonders is a solo player card game in which you buy a villain for control of the deck. Both you and the villain draw from the same deck that is full of duality. The game is available on Kickstarter until September 17th. The campaign was funded in less than two days, and here is what Dennis has to say about it. That was that was surreal. I set the goal, I believe, in, in setting kind of big um, and just kind of seeing how high is up, but I don't think I really believe. The closer we got, the more excited I got. And, um, you know, it got to the point, I think we funded it in 40 hours total, and that was just... Uh, it was phenomenal. And so it's been a mini version of that every time we have a stretch goal too, because it's so exciting just to have these new elements in the game and make it nicer for people and add new components. Once you see the game, the art is what captures your eye. Lauren Brown is the heart and soul of the art behind this game. It's all her genius, her style. Each character has their own backstory. This is Byzantus the Enthraller. He's an evil, uh, powerful sorcerer that uses mind control to bend people to his will. Lauren's specific quote was, whoops, my hand slipped and I made him hot. So it's kind of, a, it's a subversive take on your typical, you know, powerful sorcerer. You think of like old and decrepit and whatever. And he's got the white hair going on, but it's more of a look than because of old age. The aesthetic of each piece is really powerful and each car by itself tells their own story. The first time I opened up this image, 80s synth music started blasting all over my house. Besides the art and how the game plays, it's really important to make sure the game is known before the campaign starts. I kind of did a public debut of Deck of Wonders at Gen Con 2019. Um, and it was, I mean, it was a very rough prototype. Um, black and white cards built in PowerPoint that was just wireframe boxes. I was at the Starbucks across the street uh, getting feedback and kind of using that to just validate that I'm actually on to a cool idea here. I don't just think it is in my head. And so got great response there. And that started building an email list off of those four days at Gen Con. I went to some local cons. I would put out blog content. I did a little bit of paid promotion on Facebook towards the end. When I launched, I had close to 600 people or thereabouts on, on my email list. I, um, I had built up, I think, close to a thousand followers on Kickstarter. Of course, I, I blasted it all over my social media channels. But I think those, those three elements, the social, the email, and the Kickstarter were that perfect storm that helped get us to, to 48 hours. Preponderance of that, or most of it, was on emails. A mailing list can be an amazing tool for first publishers, but sometimes a small push can help the campaign to be funded in a small period of time. The final piece that I think really made 48 Hours work, there was a very compelling reason. I offered up a, a digital art book, which is going to have all of Lauren's amazing work in it. I knew from the year I'd spent promoting the game that art was something that people resonated with. Just having something special that people felt like they were making happen by taking a chance early on the game was really effective as well. During the process of the campaign, there are a lot of things to consider, and the stretch goals are a huge part of Kickstarter's campaign. But how do you balance those goals in order to make sure it won't affect the final production? I'm a newbie. There were a lot of unknowns going in, mm -hmm. and one big unknown was how fast social goals were going to unlock. Um, you know, you you could have one tweet blow up and go viral and then suddenly you've blown through all your social goals in a second. Uh, or you could be like, oh man, no one liked my stuff and I'm stuck and I have to figure out what to do next. I've had experienced mentors tell me the place that Kickstarters get in trouble is that they feel like they've got to promise the moon to get people excited about stretch goals. And then they take a really solid base concept for a game and turn it into this you know, amalgam of all these different stretch goals that didn't really fit on. When developing a new game, it's important to choose the right medium to get it out. It, is, it has been very true that you need to bring your audience to Kickstarter. There's not an audience waiting on Kickstarter for you. That said, if you can bring your small audience to Kickstarter, then there's a larger audience that will sit up and, and take notice. I knew from that early validation I'd done and from lots of the prototyping and playtesting that the idea for Deck of Wonders was strong. And I kind of took it as far as I could out of my own pocket. And Kickstarter is one of the few platforms where that is enough 
to get people's buy-in and to get people excited. Still, building a game and the campaign for it can come with ups and downs and things that you might not even consider. On the technical side, I did not learn up front how to quickly make and update images. So every time I change an image on the Kickstarter page, which is mostly just gigantic images, right? I have made those in Keynote. I export them to a PDF that I then export at high resolution to a PNG. Then I have to crop down the PNG and upload that to the page. It is painful. It takes <laughs> so long. My recommendation up front would be, even if you're working with a designer, learn how to do the design stuff yourself, specifically the graphic design stuff, because you will be doing a lot of that updating your page, especially if you're successful. We all know the importance of Kickstarter, but let's learn a little bit more about the game. You have stolen the deck of wonders from fate herself. Think of fate as the deity that rules the world. All cards from both sides, the villain cards and your cards, go into the same deck. Um, and that, that highlights probably the biggest hook about this game, which is it is a solo game. So the game plays like Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering or any of those other collectible card games out there. It is designed around the idea that the, the opposite side to you is actually run on a simple set of rules. On your turn, you are playing out um, cards like you would in a CCG. On the villain's turn, you're solving the puzzle of how to manipulate them to be as ineffective as possible. In this game, each character brings their own perspective of faith and the world. For example, um, Aurora, the empath, is the second villain in the game. And she she worships fate still, actually. She's one of the few. Because she's an empath, she can always feel, manipulate all emotions around her, whether or not she wants. If she's decided that she has empathy for fate alone, but that's caused her to be really cruel to everyone else around her. The future might bring new villains for the deck. I would love to have expansion packs. I need to make sure that is a, a worthwhile pursuit and, and all that. So my focus right now is 100% on making the deck of wonders you get through the Kickstarter campaign right now um, as, as amazing and complete and compelling an experience as possible. Like that's, that's where my focus is. Once we get past that though, I have a very clear roadmap of the first two expansions that I would like to do. Each expansion will have uh, themes to explore. And then I also know the key mechanic that each expansion will introduce. And with Aurora having abilities to refill her health after a certain point, every, every expansion will introduce a major new mechanic to the game that you know, then causes you to think through everything you know in a, in a new lens. The Gum Wonder doesn't only have an amazing art, but there is a story behind of it. Walking around Artist's Alley, which is an amazing experience, and when we're back to in-person Gen Cons, I highly recommend, like, don't go to Gen Con without going to that. So I was bouncing around from artist to artist, kind of just fumbling through, like, the idea for the game and what visually I might want, but not really being sure, and I walked across Lauren's booth and her style, she's got a very Art Nouveau style. And I kind of walked up and I was like, hey, so what I'm looking for is kind of this. This is what I want. This is, this is what it has to be now. But sometimes finding an artist, it doesn't come that easy. One tip that, that Lauren gave is to go find a couple artists that you like their style in general, even if it's you know you don't have the budget for, or people that you, for whatever reason, aren't, you know, won't be the final artist, but find the people that you like or that have styles that you resonate with and then go look them up on social media and browse through all the artists that they follow. This is not the only advice that Dennis left us. The community around game design is so incredible. I just had an idea that I was passionate about and the game design community like that rallied around me. And I've had so many people coach me or encourage me through that community just because they care about the hobby. And so I always tell people that might be interested in getting into game design, um, that you're so much closer than you think. If you've ever made a house rule, if you've ever sat around after you finished the game and talked about, talk about what you liked and what you didn't mechanically, if you've ever fudged something because you think it would be more interesting or more fun or you know whatever, better balance, that is the exact skill set required to do game design. If you've done those things, if you have an idea that you're excited to pursue, you're closer than you think. Um, and I really believe that anyone can jump in and do this, and there is a community there to support you. And remember, the game will be available on Kickstarted until September 17th.